Islam is nothing close to terrorism, nothing. In fact, the religion has brought out so much compassion in me. It has given me so much wisdom. And wisdom is not something that you can explain to anybody. It comes, you know. Islam is so beautiful. It's so beautiful that I don't think any words can describe. But it takes time to understand and to learn. You have to put yourself out to learn. Assalamualaikum. My name is Rosa. I am a revert. I have been married for five years and this is my husband. Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Salifuddin. I'm the husband of Rosa. So before this, I was living in Ireland. After I got married, I moved down to Mingland. Uh, so, what's the Penang? I'm going to go to the Cafe of the Penang. I'm going to go to the And I am a revert. Back then when I was much younger, I think I am a person who is very open to religions actually. I even studied world religion and I do have a lot of Muslim friends. I think people around me are mostly not Chinese. So I kind of have the idea that I would be married to someone who is not a Chinese actually. But I honestly didn't expect to be a Muslim. I don't think anyone since young like we would know or we would imagine to be in another religion. This was something not in my idea way back then. I was a Buddhist before this in a typical normal Chinese family. I would say I really didn't understand about God then. You know, the understanding of Him and how His presence is everything, basically. Everything. But as I mentioned earlier that I studied world religions, hence getting to know Islam a bit more was something that I was very open to. Well, growing up in a Chinese family, as the other Chinese family, we practiced Buddhism, Taoism back then. But what was interesting then was, when I was young, my father actually had a Quran at home. And he's someone who also seeks, he constantly seeks for knowledge and we have all kinds of books at home. And I remember seeing the Quran at home back then. But I didn't expect that was a form of calling, maybe, you know, at the beginning. Yeah. Yes, everyone around me is Muslim. <laughs> yes, I'm not kidding. Yeah, I have a lot of, most of my friends are not Chinese and most of them are Muslims actually. So I have a lot of Muslim friends, but back then I didn't know much about the religion, did not have the exposure, didn't have the opportunity I would say, didn't have the opportunity and the chance to get to know the religion more. Yeah. It was only until when I was in college that when I took up world religion, studying about other religions that I had a better understanding about Islam. But I also had a better understanding of other religions then. It was, I guess, the calling of Islam came gradually. Yeah, after that. All this while I have been in the education line. I'm a teacher. But recently, I ventured into something new in the food and beverage industry. My husband and I, we run this cafe together with my partner. This is Cozy Cafe in Butterworth Digital Library. We have desserts, pastries, uh, light bites basically. And we have pretty good coffee too. So if you have any functions, events that you would like us to cater to you, please don't hesitate to call us or uh, visit our social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, Cozy Cafe. The link is here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. My perception towards Islam back then was obviously not the same as now, not the same at all. I think it was, like I said, due to the lack of exposure and opportunity to understand the religion better, right? And uh, I think a lot of non-Muslims, like when I was a non-Muslim then, we understood certain things differently, right? Like probably oppression towards women and basically not understanding why Muslims act or dressed or behave in a certain way. But that was all because of the lack of exposure and opportunity to get to know the religion better. So right now, I have a much clearer understanding and I would say respect to what, what I'm in right now. Yeah. So I got to know more about the religion when I met my husband then. How we got to know each other was through Facebook, but it was 
due to an incident, he rescued an old lady with Alzheimer's. And at that time, I was collecting paper cutouts from newspaper of missing old people. I would keep them in my purse. Back then, about eight years, ten years ago, we were still reading newspapers every day. So I would cut out, you know, missing people. Uh, pictures and I put them in my purse so when I saw his post which was shared by some other friend I added him wanting to know about the old lady if she was safe and that's that's when we became friends and uh, we got to know each other yep so talking about the incident you know actually I just finished working so on my way back home I saw an old lady and new old lady Apparently she has a Zyma and then she can't remember where is she heading to. She can't remember where, where was the house at. So what I do is I, you know, I asked her to come into my car. I sent her to the police station and then I bought her some food and I took a picture of her. I thought of sharing it in my Facebook. I didn't know that the post actually went viral. It was shared by thousands. So from there on, many people added me on Facebook. Yeah, she is one of it. <laughs> so yeah, I was a famous star for, you know, an instant famous star because of the post. From there, uh, her name caught my attention even though her account doesn't have any profile picture but because of her name, Rosa, it sounds so nice so I approved her. Then <laughs> over there, I saw her picture somehow, you know, it just tickled my little heart says that, hey, this is the future wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, from there, the journey starts, you know, all the courting and everything and now, yeah, here we are as a husband and wife. <laughs> But of course, I think just like every other interracial couple, the journey wouldn't be that smooth, easy. Okay, but I think comparatively to other couples, we had it much easier, but of course, we still had our fair share of challenges. Mm -hmm. I think it's very natural because we're coming from two cultures. I was formerly from another religion, you know. There was a time that we had to really talk it out, you know, if we are able to continue this relationship, so what we did to move on in our relationship, we both started attending classes together. We went for quite a few Islamic lectures as well. I think, um, yeah, there were quite many and I was exposed to a few scholars. I also attended Ipsi classes for one, I think one year before we decided to proceed our relationship to the next step. Yeah, that's when I was certain that I would convert and then we were turning for marriage. Yeah, yeah. So, a lot of learning then. There is no rush, no hurry. I think I was very lucky that I was also taking my time to understand the religion better, attending classes. And uh, Houdin was very, he was very patient as well, I would say. I was interested to learn. I was interested to feel my curiosity. In classes, I think I raised many questions about certain rulings in Islam. Why this? Why that? Why? Why can't this, you know? And uh, fortunately, I had many of my answers answered by my teacher, Brother Kamaruddin. Slowly, I had the wisdom that instead of voicing out so much, talking out so much, I started to allow myself to understand, to listen, to hear more and to understand. And that's when I realized that if we keep our mind and heart open, we will be able to absorb and truly understand why certain things are supposed to be the way they are. Obviously, the misunderstanding about women dressing up, covered in total. Back then, obviously, we would think that it's a form of oppression. Of, yes, it is an obligation. It is. But thinking about where I am now, I can understand why. And I see the wisdom of it, why we, some women chose to dress in the way they are dressed. You know, it wasn't like back then what I was thinking. It, it was just to follow the Islamic rules because a lot of people would think and it is also true that in Islam, we have a lot of prayers, we have a lot of rules and... Obligations. Obli yes, rules and obligations, basically. It is indeed true that the rules and obligations are more in Islam, you know? Back then, it didn't resonate with me. Why? But right now, I, I, could, I could understand why certain rulings are supposed to be like this. It, it made sense. And that is because, you know, I allow myself some more time to get to know about the religion, to find out more, and we would discuss. Houdin and I would discuss about certain topics until I could understand better. Yeah. Oh, about the class, surprisingly, because being born Muslims, we always thought that we have this mindset of like, ah, oh, I know better compared to non-Muslims. Then after I started to attend the class in Ipsi, then I realized, oh, there are actually so many more things for me to learn, even me as a Muslim. Like, there are so many things that I miss out, you know, so many things that I didn't know. 
So it was very fun for me because of uh, back then my girlfriend, which is now my wife. We have to go to the class almost every week, and then from there we learn a lot with each other, you know, about Quran, about Hadith, and then basically I get to understand Islam better, a lot, a lot better. Yeah, I think the class is actually very, very good. It's a platform whereby the non-Muslims can actually understand Islam better. Mm -hmm. So. For me, it is one of the most efficient centers that I have yeah. ever been from my life. Yeah, and I, well, before this runs away, I, I think Ipsi has opened up a lot of people's minds and hearts into accepting other types of people more because when you're in class, everyone is in different shapes, colors, sizes, different nationalities, you know, so it didn't make me feel like I was an outcast. I was one of them. We are from a different race, from a different religion. So I felt very comfortable there, not judged, not an outcast. So I would say Ipsi is a good place for other people to come in, to get to know. We're not talking about converting everybody, but a place, a platform for people to get to know about the religion more. And to know that we Muslims have different looks, shapes and sizes. Yeah. So at that time when we were dating, my family knew that he is a Muslim, so back then they they were actually pretty okay with it. So compared to the other couples, I think on that part, my family was fine. Because all the while, I always wanted a guy who, who loves God. Although I didn't really understand God at that time. But I wanted someone who feared God. And when we got to know each other, when we went for a date, um, there was particularly this one time. He came over to my house and my mom was around. It was a prayer time and then he wanted to pray. He asked, if we could let him pray in one of the rooms and then we said yes I saw him pray and I I was very intrigued I had utmost admiration of a guy praying although I didn't really understand then about the religion nothing it was it was just us both as individuals getting to know each other right so I felt it I mean I felt really it was it was a feeling that I don't think anybody would understand because I love to see him pray then Yep. So as, as time went on, we knew that we really liked each other. We attended classes together in Ipsi. We attended many Islamic lectures, talks. He even got me some books to read. Week by week, we would discuss about small issues, small topics to make me understand more about the religion and about whatever concerns that I have on the religion. Well, of course, Brother Kamaruddin in Ipsi helped me a lot. He answered a lot of my questions. One general one which I think we are all constantly fed with is that um, Islam is always linked to terrorism. The media every day, you know, they depict the Muslims to be a certain look, you know. So if back then I wasn't given the chance to get to know about the religion, I would be like every other person who would have the same understanding, that typical stereotype understanding about Islam. But obviously when you found out about the truth, Islam is nothing close to terrorism. Nothing. In fact, the religion has brought out so much compassion in me. It has given me so much wisdom. And wisdom is not something that you can explain to anybody. It comes, you know. Islam is so beautiful. It's so beautiful that I don't think any words can describe. But it takes time to understand and to learn. You have to put yourself out to learn. It does not come like that, you know. If we allow ourselves to question, to seek for answers, He, Allah, will give you. He will answer you in ways that you cannot imagine. And I'm very fortunate that I met Hudin. He guided me a lot. I think together we learn. Yeah. You know, it wasn't me learning from him only. I think he learned a lot from him. Yeah, as well. And together we learn more about Islam. Yeah. There's so much to learn. I think learning never stops ever. And I think we are planning for me to be enrolled in Quran class. You just finished your master. Yes, because I just finished my master's last week. Hopefully I can pass, <laughs> inshallah. And yeah, when I'm ready, I will be enrolled in my Quran class in Ipsi. I really do hope uh, that I will be able to read Quran in, in its original version in Arabic language. Inshallah, Allah will bring me closer to Him every day, step by step, gradually. Like I said, you know, wisdom and the understanding and the love comes. You, you cannot imagine, you, you, can't, you can't tell when it comes to you. But this year, during Ramadan, I felt it. I felt it more and I couldn't explain. Back then, performing prayer, Salah was, 
was like, oh, you know. But this time around, I felt it more. Our past few Ramadans we celebrated in Europe. We had friends who got married during that time, so we took the opportunity to also travel during the month. So we traveled to a few places and I think it was a very exciting journey for me. I fasted in different countries. Certain country was so many hours. We hours. Yeah, I think I break my fast at 10 p.m. and then 2 a.m. it was Sahor already. <laughs> but it was very fun for us in 2019. 2019. Yeah, particularly in Italy because I remember buying pizza for my <laughs> buka puasa. Yeah, and having pizza again for Saho. Very fun. Yep. So we've been to quite a few countries. Holland, Scotland, England, Italy. There's this particular city that we both went during our travel time in 2019. It was in the city of Utrecht, which is in Netherlands. So we saw this Islamic center. It looks very modern. It looks like a mosque. Very big. It's actually an integrated building of mosque, shopping center, education center for the Muslims over there. Which me and Osa, we found it to be like very wow factor, you know, that we question ourselves. We in Malaysia, we should have such centers as well, yes. whereby it can be a place which is very useful for the Ummah, you know. So I think about after a year plus of me attending classes of us learn about Islam, I felt that at that point, I have gotten all of the answers that I was asking, that I sought for and I was satisfied that they were all answered and they made sense. I'm glad that I had my questions answered, you know, that I had my questions raised and I took some time to think about the answers and they made sense, you know. Religion is for people who think, that's what I feel. And I gave a lot of thought into it and they did fulfill my curiosity all the while and cleared my misconceptions and misunderstandings. So at that point, I felt that I was ready and I felt that I could continue my relationship with Houdin because we had a deal before that um, if I didn't understand or if I couldn't accept what I learned throughout the year in my classes about Islam then we will go separate ways we had a very mature relationship which I was very thankful for so at that point I felt that I was ready and I told him I told uh, brother Kamaruddin and I decided to revert on his birthday in 2015 yep and ever since then, I'm really glad, I'm really glad that I kept on learning and the wisdom about Islam, the feelings, the empowerment of what Islam has given to me, to us, has only become greater and greater. Amidst the challenges, the rewards and his blessings are... Miraculous. No words can describe, you know. So when friends of our relatives, friends or families, when they found out that I was with a Malay, Juana, yo, or they tell my mom like, your daughter is with a Juana, is it Juana, you know? Um, of course, it wasn't something that they could accept just like that. I think I did my part well. I brought him to meet my family and then close family friends and he introduced himself really well. I think as a Muslim, he carried himself really well and they could see the beauty of Islam through him, fortunately. So I think he played quite a huge role in changing their perspective yeah. towards Islam, towards interracial couples. It's not as difficult as... What it is. Yeah, you will have some challenges. I think every other relationship, even the same race, same religion, you will have your own fair share of challenges. So same as ours, we will have our little ones as well. But fortunately, we turn out. We make it true. Yep. So <laughs> after we got married, I think it has been a wonderful journey for us. I think for us, we try to see the positive. We pick the good side in everything. There's always something that you have to give in to get in return. And if only everyone will look at it in this way, there's so much to gain from. Focus so, on the positivity. Yeah, yeah. Instead of always talking about the differences in the different cultures, in like Chinese family, Malay family, instead of always talking about the differences, we should really celebrate them and accept learn something new it, it wasn't easy for me as well you know understanding the malay culture and practicing my new lifestyle as a muslim but it wasn't that difficult you know you just put yourself into learning something new and i think towards him as well you know he learned our family culture but my family was really accepting yeah yeah, yeah. i think like they really respect us all this while in chinese new year we have our own halal table they have their own reunion table and we have our own halal table. I get to celebrate Chinese New Year as usual. I bring him to... Meet all the relatives, which I enjoy every year. 
Yeah, and, and they enjoy meeting him as well. It's really nice when, you know, you have more to talk about. It's true. Yeah. And likewise, I will go back for Raya uh, to his kampong. Very first experience enjoying kampong like stuff, which she was like, <laughs> oh. This is Kampo? Okay. <laughs> but she enjoyed it. Yeah, she enjoyed it. I think what's fun for us is that like the other couples, if you're of the same race, you will have to decide, oh, Raya Pertama, we go back to your mom's place. Raya Kedua, it's my mom's place. Or if it's further, it'd be even more difficult. Oh, this Raya, we have to be in another state. or oh, we can't be with my parents. But for us, there's no yeah, problem. There's no issue about that. Your yeah. downturn is you have to give double good Raya. Why is Raya Raya? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's actually overall I think it's we enjoy, yeah, we enjoy being it. an interracial couple. Yeah. yeah. It's very fun to learn this. So when we were together before we got married, the journey towards learning Islam was something that was very bearable for me. I enjoyed learning and even though I had some concerns or questions, I made sure that they were always answered by my teacher, by him, you know, we would discuss it out. So the pace was all right for me. But there was this one particular point, one incident that made me very scared, that made me that at that particular time that was the fear that I felt and it was really overwhelming it was this particular incident whereby when we were out shopping I think then we had a call that one of his relatives in Kampong passed away so immediately we went back to his place I had to borrow a set of baju kurung and a shawl from his relatives because I was not dress covered up so we had to depart back to Kampong and then his family's maid brought me the baju kurung and the shawl and she dressed me up and she kept she kept saying over and over again awak sekarang sudah jadi Melayu sudah Islam sudah Melayu ya sekarang I I was really scared that constant phrase of awak sekarang sudah jadi Melayu see like I said I knew that I was heading towards conversion it was fine for me because he allowed me my space, learning something new every week. I was so comfortable with my pace. There was no force, there was no hurry for anything. But at that particular point, the phrase of Awak sudah jadi Melayu sekarang, you know? It was scary. But fortunately, that was just one night. You know, we went back kampong and then we paid our respects and uh, talked to him about this. And the important thing is, he did not rush me and I really appreciate that. So I would like the other revert couples to understand that we all have our own timing. The rush will scare people away because let's not only talk about religion. It can be in any other fields or any other experiences. Anything that has been thrown to you so quickly, so fast, will make you step back actually. You would need time, you would want some space to explore, to understand a little bit. Yeah, so anything too sudden will scare anybody away. And I hope overall our stories, our experiences will invite people to open their hearts more. Don't close your heart and minds, you know. If you open, if you let it understand, it, it will come to you eventually. Knowledge, whatever you're seeking for. So from my point of view as a husband, you know, it's not easy actually to convince someone who has very little information and understanding about Islam, especially when it comes to product and product, you know. <laughs> Whereby that certain things you just have to believe, you know. So you know when, when it comes to this point, I always question myself, how do I explain to my wife? And then sometimes what I do, I just pray and then I just ask God like please like you know let her encounter certain things that she will just understand by herself. And thank God, thank God, you know, a lot of times like this thing just happen and she understands a lot of things by herself from the class and also from our discussions. My role as a husband, I give a lot of space for my wife to actually learn and understand Islam better because I do not want to show my thoughts or force her to accept things which she's still learning, you know, because I don't want to give her the shock of like, oh, Islam is actually very oppressing or what, because we do know actually Islam is a religion of compassion. So I give her a lot of time for her to learn and to love Islam and herself, which I thank Allah for giving her the hidayah that she needs. She chose Islam and at the same time, I also appreciate the cooperation that I get from my family members, especially my mother and also my siblings, whereby they truly understand that my wife, she's a converted Muslim. So they gave her the space for her to be in the journey to become a better Muslim. Of course, as a husband, I would love to see my wife to cover up one day, but I also understand that she had been living a life of 23 years as a non-Muslim, different culture, different way of wearing, and she started to adapt bit by bit. And truthfully, I am very happy that she has 
adapted more and more and her belief and faith towards Islam is actually getting stronger. So for me, as long as her faith towards Allah is solid, that's what makes me feel happy. And the rest, I really believe that she herself will do it by herself in order to make herself become a better Muslim. So sometimes when I see my wife learning more things than me, especially when she went to her classes because I'm busy with my work, and then like, she came back and she talked to me about all the story of the Rasul and Sahaba, it makes me like, oh, I need to learn more, I need to be better because like she started to know more than me and, which is actually quite fun because it pressures me to actually learn more and so, so what did I do is like you know, uh, I pick up new books and I watch a lot of videos from a lot of scholars you know, to really understand Islam in a better perspective this is actually the beauty of marrying to a river whereby like, as a husband especially you have to do really a lot in order to guide your newly related wife to a better journey in Islam we as Penang, like, we are very lucky. We have Ipsy, which is actually based in Georgetown. I feel that having this center in Penang is actually very good for all of us. This center actually works as a place to spread and to give good messages about Islam to the Muslim themselves and also to the non-Muslims. We're really looking forward to get back to classes yeah. uh, in Ipsy. I think I miss seeing a lot of my friends there as well. I need to continue learning and, and I would love it that you know, we are able to have our physical discussions in class. I can't wait to get back to Ipsy. It has also came to my notice that um, we are hopeful to own a bigger building in Georgetown. And I think that's a really good purpose because so far Ipsy has done one that's done amazing, amazing things for us reverts and also to spread awareness, to teach others, educate others and give the non-Muslims a place, an opportunity to understand Islam more. I think this place right now, it would be great if we can, you know, we can... Bigger, bigger place, place. Yeah. yeah. I think if we have a building like this over here, this would allow the other people, the, the you know, tourists. yeah, tourists or non-Muslims, you know, this gives them a good start to want to know more about Islam, you know. As Muslims, I think we need to strive, we need to... Show that Islam can strive together with the time. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's not like what people say, you know, it's a backdated religion. No, we are supposed to equip ourselves with knowledge, with skills. And I think that comes with, if we are able to have a bigger building, it will be a better opportunity Yeah. for Ipsy to strike better. As for now, Ipsy is actually gathering funds for the new building. We hope everybody who are watching this video, guys can together with us support to collect and to donate some funds for this new project of Ipsy whereby that I really believe, I truly truly believe that it will be the good for the Ummah and that it is never a waste to actually contribute for your Saham of Akhirat. I think as Muslims, we are constantly reminded about the importance of giving back and the importance to pay zakat, do charity. It's, it's it is always mentioned in the Quran to sedekah, to give donations. Yeah, so let's do what we can to fundraise for us to be able to own this building and be able to contribute back to others in the sense that we are able to spread the positivity of Islam to educate others. You know, we I don't think we have that that kind of building yet so far. It would be amazing for us to have, to have one in Penang. Yeah, yeah. I, I would I would be so proud. I'm actually know. looking forward for this. Yeah, if we could invite other people to understand the religion better. People like myself, you know, we're really, really thankful for Ipsy for doing such an amazing job. Yeah. Yeah, so I think if we are able to fundraise and own this building, I think it will be just like the The one the, that we saw in, yeah, the in mosque, Utah in Holland, yeah. The mosque that we saw in Holland. Which is amazing, amazing. Yeah. I think that is a good wonderful representation, you know, and it will invite others to want to get to know, to step in the building to find out wow, you know, what what is this? I'm curious to know about Islam. This would be a good start. What I would like the other reverts, or even those who have not reverted, but they're in an interracial relationship, don't let that fear of the unknown scare you. Allah has His master plan for you. You may not understand at the beginning because obviously you cannot understand, but it is it is quite scary to step into the unknown, to, to leave the comfort zone. But uh, sincerely open your heart and pray and talk to Him. And honestly, if you discuss it with your parents, be as honest as you can with them about the relationship that you're in. Inshallah, if this is the journey that Allah has planned for you, it will work out well. Don't hide in fear. Don't be quiet alone. Talk. I believe your partner deserves also a chance to meet your family. Let them be acquainted and let them be more familiarized with the religion before you make any decision. Don't be in fear. 
as of for me, from my point of view, when you want to start something, especially interracial relationship, I would advise that both parties must be truthful to each other and they also must be truthful to their parents because this thing would make things a lot easier for them to proceed to the next stage because Islam condones for us to be truthful. So whatever it is, we have to be truthful even though he might hurt us back. But you know, we must always believe in the planning of Allah and try to be as truthful as possible. And then for people like me who are in a situation where they have challenges of being in an interracial marriage, I would advise that seek help from organizations like Ipsy, places like Ipsy. Brother Kamaruddin especially, he's an amazing, amazing mentor, teacher, pendakwa, and very, very friendly as well. So people like him could be a very good hand, good help for people like you. Overall, I'm very blessed, very grateful. I'm glad I took that step. I'm glad I took that leap of faith entering to the unknown but I took up that challenge and learned more and I'm so glad because once you've tasted the wisdom, the love, the faith I'm really glad you know. Overall, I just want to thank Ipsy I think my husband and I Yeah, we are, are very thankful Yeah, we are forever because grateful Because Ipsy, to be honest, is a platform to whatever that we have achieved today you know, especially in our relationships Yeah, it's yeah. truly amazing and up until today that I can't be thankful enough to Ipsy for what it had done towards our relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It was the place that connect us. <laughs> provided us with what we need. Yeah. The information to fill my curiosities, mm -hmm. to make me understand about the religion more. And to provide a place basically for someone like me to just step into the religion, to feel like I'm part of it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm family, mm -hmm. not an outcast. It's my social circle, it's where I seek my comfort. And I have a new family Thank you for watching our videos. Please like, comment and subscribe to IPSI channel to support our dakwah efforts. Thank you.